Hi, I'm Audrey Hassan, your host for Broad and High, the ultimate intersection of arts and culture, where we explore the character and creativity not only in Columbus, but across the country. Nestled in historic downtown Worthington, the Doll Museum at the Old Rectory features an impressive collection of 19th and 20th century dolls. From the molded, unglazed china dolls, made from Parian marble, and portrait dolls modeled after European monarchs, to the French fashion models boasting wigs made of real hair, this charming little museum is one of Worthington's hidden treasures. Well, it's a wonderful collection of 19th century dolls and has some very unusual dolls that can't be seen in many other places at all. And together, it's a nice little jewel. We get all kinds of cheers from doll collectors, but we get a lot of oohs and ahs from kindergartners too. <laughs> Well, the earliest ones are the ones that uh, were made of wood in Germany. The Germans were the toy makers for the Western world initially, so we have some very early small ones that we call penny woodens or peg woodens. And we have some portrait dolls, some china dolls, some Parian china dolls. Um, the French fashions are probably the elite of this group. And then we have some American dolls that were made by Isanna Walker and Joel Ellis, people that are big names in American doll making early on. A portrait doll is a doll that is made in the image of a real person. So for all the kids who come here and have American Girl dolls, there are wonderful stories about these dolls, but they weren't real people. The dolls over there uh, include the Empress Eugenie, who was married to Napoleon III, the Kaiserin Augusta von Weimar, the Empress of Germany, and there's Countess Dagmar, whom we associate with the Tsar of Russia. Um, and there's Alice in Wonderland, too, who, even though she's a, a literary character, reflects a real person's life. So. Those are the ones we typically have the kids looking for. The Alice kind of shocks them because she doesn't look like Disney's Alice. A Parian doll uh, refers to the Parian marbles that were being used for sculpture at that time. And so they will have pierced ears, sometimes they'll have an embellishment. They were fired twice and therefore much more expensive than the China dolls that have the very shiny faces. We have a wishbone doll, and the wishbone doll is the earliest Worthington doll that we have, and uh, it was made on a turkey wishbone, so it was found floating in the mud of the cellar of the Orange Johnson house at the time that the society uh, was going to restore the house. These are the French fashion dolls, and they are the fanciest ladies on the block. Um, these dolls had every stitch of clothing that a lady of fashion would want to be wearing in Paris. This is uh, the lady's uh, toiletry case, and so it's made out of leatherette with little uh, mother of pearl decorations, and inside is all the, the items that might be needed if you're going traveling. Your perfume bottles, your bath sponge, Kids always like to know that this is a 140-year-old bar of soap. And um, here we have the brushes, which includes her lice comb, which every lady would be needing in that time period. And the fun thing is to look at the label on the back and notice that it's from the toy store Onam Bleu, um, which is still in existence in Paris today. The yeah, Isanna Walker is the treat and the treasure of the doll museum. Um, she is a beautiful doll. She was made by a lady doll maker named Isanna Walker, and she made these cloth dolls uh, that she fashioned herself, and her sister hand painted them. So everything about the doll is original, from her dress to her little red shoes and all the things she wears underneath. The Isanna Walker dolls are very treasured among American doll collectors. And she's very sweet. Her name is Thankful, and it's just a wonderful name for this beautiful little doll. We sometimes have doll houses. We have a huge doll house collection. We also have uh, any number of other e exhibitions that 
are sometimes borrowed from other collectors in the area, and in this case, uh, ones that are from our collection with a collector's dolls are being displayed. And it kind of allows us to look at one facet at a time. Uh, occasionally, someone will call us and they'll have a treasured item that they would like to see preserved and shared. And so if it fits in our collection, which does go into the 20th century now, but uh, if it fits in our collection, then it comes and it's on permanent vacation here.